Hi guys, Amber here. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. Yes, I've uh, taken a little absence, but we're back. We're back and better than ever. And to kick it off again, we have a voice actress, an actress, and an all-around lovely lady who I've literally just met for the first time over Zoom this evening. You may know her as the voice of Harold Frumpkin in the Rugrats franchise, Martha Wayne in Batman Brave and the Bold, um, Stella Bates in Batman the Animated Series, especially in the episode Mudslide, which I just watched before. Really good episode. Ron Perlman as Clayface. It's just yes. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And I met him actually um back in 2021. Fantastic. No, and that was before I got into Batman. Man, if I was into it then, I would have asked him all about Clayface. <laughs> <laughs> you are a fan. I love that. Yeah, That's I, I'm, I, I love it, honestly. Um, my guest is also the voice of Mrs. Klopotsnik in Curious George, Ursa Gummy in Adventures of the Gummy Bears, Janine Melnitz in Extreme Ghostbusters, April Eagle in Sabre Rider and the Star Sheriffs, Snappy Smurfling on the Smurfs, um, Elsa and Angel for Monster Tales on uh, Wake, Rattle and Roll, uh, Tony for the American Tale movie franchise, Elsa Frankenstein in Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School, Star in Rockin' with Judy Jetson, Vanna Pyatt in Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf, that's mine and my brother's favourite Scooby-Doo film actually, we're going to watch it this weekend at his wonderful i know wonderful. it's what brings us together it's what brings us together well you know and it's so funny the ghoul school thing has never died it it has gone on every halloween i can't tell you uh on twitter everyone reaches out massively you know yeah. um and then we got to reprise the roles at least Rusi did and susan and i on okko uh we got to reprise the roles again and we hadn't susan i'm pretty much in touch with all the time i've never lost touch all over i'm seeing yeah. her this august at tf nation she's coming over to england oh how fantastic so excited oh, about that's wonderful. Show. Just... that is totally totally wonderful oh hang on one second that's okay. i'm sorry that's okay oh dear um uh, it's okay it's just it's my it's probably one of my mom's caregivers but i think everything's fine so that's okay i hope your mom's doing okay as well she's 97 and uh good age she's, really she's, good age she's hanging in there she's been in and out of the hospital several we just we think she's too irish we just think she's too irish to go <laughs> so that's that i know that's probably not popular with the brits but <laughs> that is totally no, honestly, I've, I've never heard of that expression before so you're all right <laughs> well i i it's my expression about my mother. I mean, because she's very Irish and her mother was very Irish and her father was very Irish. So I think she's just too strong and feisty, you know. Yeah, indeed. My guest has also done voices for shows such as Darkwing Duck, House of Mouse, Foo Fur, Duck Tales, The Further Adventures of Super Ted, New Kids on the Block, that's for you, Taylor. Um, Johnny Bravo, Superman the Animated Series, Batman Beyond, Static Shock, The Tick, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and also, eh, not one and not not something that everyone brings up, the lost US dub of Tugs. Oh my lord. <laughs> I don't know that I remember that. Okay. That's incredible. Oh my god, you're really something. <laughs> my guess is Pat music thank you it's thank you music. What, there we go. i've Hi. never i've never had an intro that fantastic before in my life so <laughs> i i totally appreciate it thank you so much you're welcome thank you so much for coming on my show it's it's a pleasure to see you over zoom absolutely and uh and how wonderful that we can do it this way you know yeah. what i'm saying uh, I mean even if COVID didn't happen, I would still be doing interviews over Zoom because, yes, I have a passport. I've been abroad and the big US trip is coming next spring. I can, I can oh. promise that now. It's set Are you coming to Los Angeles? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> well, you have to get hold of me. We, we ought to have a dinner, you know? Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. That would be like so fun. I think the, probably one of the biggest scores that I scores that I have met with like arranging to meet up with people, not just with you. There's a few other people. I think the rarest one probably has to be Andrea Romano. Ah, one of my dearest friends in the whole wide world. She's brilliant. Well, she actually started my career basically because really, yeah, I had taken Michael Bell's, who I know you also know. Love Michael. I, uh, I had taken his animation class and uh, the last class was taught by Andrea 
And Andrea walked into the building and she was wearing silver tights, silver tights, which I had never seen before. I had seen all kinds of, and I love tights of all colors and, you know, things. And she had on silver tights. And I don't know what possessed me because I didn't even know she was there to teach the class. But I said, can I touch those? <laughs> can I touch your legs? She's like, yes, please, here. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we became good friends, and she hired me to to do an episode on Smurfs, and uh, just as a you know voice, just yeah. a voice of some character. And then um, afterwards, you know, I auditioned for and got Snappy, which was um, the first big series that I had. Ah, oh, um, really with cool. Hanna Barbera, yeah, yeah. So that was really fun, and I based Snappy on my dog. Uh, because I had a dog that just couldn't relax, just was, you know, just absolutely crazy all the time, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, I just based him on, on that. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. And then, of course, and then, of course, Andrea voice directed you for the DC animated shows because she did all of them. Yes. Yeah, I, she I, did. Absolutely amazing. You know, when, when I first met her, she was a second director with Gordon Hunt. Yeah. Gordon Hunt was the main director at HB at HB and um and she was sitting right alongside alongside him. Um but then she started directing and uh, it's just fantastic. Really fantastic. So yeah, yeah, of course. Well, considering we're already, we're already talking about uh, the DC Animated Universe, let's start with that. Um, okay. So, of course, you've done pretty much a lot of the main, uh, the main, you know, series. So you've done uh, Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, and Batman Beyond, and uh -huh. Static Shock as well. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So, what was it like, first of all, to work on? Because I'm going to go through it in chronological order because I've got all the. Uh, them listed oh and you also mask of the phantasm the film yes yes that's right here's the fun thing you're remembering so many wonderful things you are you have a better handle on it in some ways than i do but uh kevin conroy would be the first thing that i would say because beautiful mom what an incredible performance and uh how he really embodied Batman. I mean, he, yeah. it just came out of him. And so what a joy to be able to play his mother, um, at least vocally. <laughs> yeah, because I, I think in that episode, because uh, it was Diedrich Bader who was voicing Batman in that series. And Kevin oh, that's right, that's right. That's Thomas right. Wait, he was your husband. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Oh my wow. God. Oh my yeah, God. You, have a, you have a great, a great grasp and memory of all this, you know, after a while and doing a bunch of these things, they're all delightful to remember, but they tend to kind of merge together a little bit in certain areas. Um, and uh, that's kind of a little bit of the way uh, the DC, but Andrea was such a fantastic director, you know, yeah. she, would, she would just pull out wonderful you know, I had her as a director. I loved working with Gordon Hunt, who I loved working with. Uh, Susan Blue, who directed me, and I loved working with. So, um, all of them, you know, became good. Uh, Susan and and uh, and Andrea especially became good friends, close friends of mine. So yeah, they did definitely. I need to get Andrea on my podcast. She said she doesn't do interviews anymore, but like, <laughs> really. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, she she did Wilfred Dole's podcast, but that I can understand because they're friends and she directed Will on Batman Beyond and uh, Brave and the Bold. Right. right, right. Well, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe she doesn't want to be on camera. I think she did say something about she about something about her own talk about her own career. Yeah, like I, it's it's hard to describe it really, but uh -huh. that's respect. That's understandable. Yeah, sure. I mean, she yeah. would be. A, she, She'd be a really good guest though. But, oh, know, she's a, she's fantastic, and she the knows story so. Story she's got. She, oh, that's the thing, that's the thing because she directed everyone, and yeah. she has all those stories, you know, which is which are I fantastic. Know. I mean, you know, I, I doing doing Smurfs for me was huge because that was my first time entering the world of a series, you know, 
Mm-hmm. And I showed up that first day at HB and I walked into the lobby. I went in the front entrance. I parked my car and I walked all the way around to the front entrance of Hanna-Barbera and came in. Once you do that, you never do that again. You always come in the back door. I had no idea. It was my first day. And, um, and I came in and uh, there, I was alone in the, in the room. I went up to the desk with the exception of someone who was reading the paper in the corner. And uh, I went up to the reception desk and said, hi, I'm Pat Music. I'm here for Smurfs. It was, you know, early. And she yeah. said, okay, it'll be a little while. Just have a seat and, and we'll call you. And I said, okay, fine. And I sat down. I was so excited. And uh, then a few minutes later from behind the paper, I hear, mm-hmm. are you here for Smurfs? And I said, <laughs> Yes, yes, I am. Hi, uh, my name's Pat Music. And she went, hmm, I'm June Foray. She said, <gasps> June, no, oh my gosh, yeah. I'm actually wearing a Warner Brothers t shirt now. Like she's from behind right, the paper. Which... Never pulled the paper down. Hi, I'm June Foray. Just behind the paper. No, right? that's amazing. I was, I went, oh my God, Rocket J Squirrel is like, sitting oh. behind that newspaper. <laughs> Natasha, I, I really? just Tweety, I, I just <laughs> all of these characters that I had loved for so long. And because uh, she played Jokey Smurf. And so uh, it was fantastic because they did a whole big reading at a long conference table. We would do the reading of the script first. And uh, I got to meet everyone in the cast of Smurfs. And a lot of them were just fantastic people and people you'd seen forever and ever. Yeah. And uh, and then Jonathan Winters was hired as Grandpa Smurf. And he came on and, and Winters just wouldn't stop. He would just do solid comedy. I mean, they had to finally just say, you have to stop so we can work. Uh, it was just fantastic, but but the people I got to work with on that show made all the difference to me. And uh, so at one point, mm-hmm. um, June was not, shall we say, free with compliments. She, you know, she pretty much just did her job. And 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 at one point, there was the writers had done this magical thing where Snappy does something, eats something, or smells something, or something happens, and he turns into this huge huge character i mean it's still snappy but he's gigantic and so i had to do that voice as a giant person now and uh you just do it you know you don't don't really think about it i just did it and gordon you know directed me and helped me with all that and afterwards I, i was it was great because i got to switch back and forth and then when i got out of the studio when i walked out of the studio june went Good work, kid. And that, to me, I'd won an Oscar at that point. You know, uh, it was fantastic. Yeah. So, and Frank Welker was on that show. Michael Bell was on that show. Paul Winchell was on that show. You wouldn't know, but he did a kids program called Kukla, Fran, and Ollie when I was a little teeny kid that we used to watch on TV. So that was good. Uh, Alan Young was on that show. He was on Mr. Ed with the horse. Uh, all of these people that I got to meet, Lucille Bliss, uh, who was very famous. She'd done the first cartoon I ever watched, which was Crusader Rabbit. So I got yeah. to work with all these guys. And that was it for me. And then they, and Charlie Adler, they hired Charlie Adler. Yeah. And Julie Dees and Noel North, and we were the Smurflings, and we were kind of just brought on to kind of perk things up a little bit. Yeah, know? yeah. Wow, what a lovely memory. What was that name? Kukla and Ollie. What was what was that show called again? Kukla, Kukla, Fran, and Ollie. K U K L A. Fran. Yeah. And ah, Ollie. found it. There we Did go. you find it? Excellent. Yeah. Google it. It's all fast YouTube. too, folks. That's great. It's all on YouTube. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Is- so Paul Winchell operated those puppets and did their voices. Yeah. And as a very small child, I mean, it was black and white early television. I think I couldn't have been any more than two or three years old, you know? 
and it was one of the first uh, programs we watched on TV. It was really amazing. Wow. What a lovely and memory. then April, his daughter ended up doing voice work too. As you know, you probably met April. I actually interviewed her for my podcast. There you go. There you yeah. Go. She's lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've just realized, Pat, I've made a terrible mistake. It turns out Kevin Conroy did not voice Thomas Wayne in Batman Brave and the Bold. I I wondered about it, but then I thought to myself, she knows better than I do. I had a look and find the voice actors. He was voiced by multiple people. Um, Adam West voiced him in one episode, but it wasn't the episode that you were in as Martha. No. But if you no. go on behind the voice actors, uh, uh-huh. three others, let's have a look. Uh, oh, hang on. That's what everything's going all over the place here. Um, let's have a look at the credits. So we've got, yep, yep, yep. Ma- Pat Music as Martha Wayne, and as Thomas Wayne, Corey Burton as Thomas oh! Wayne. Fantastic. Bullwinkle. Corey Burton did Bullwinkle and many other wonderful things. And what a lovely yeah. guy. Lovely, actually, lovely. When I Skyped him a few years back, he actually did the Bullwinkle voice. It was like, is that Bill Scott? You sound just like I know. him. I know. That's it scary. Was amazing. I know. It yeah. was amazing. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Uh, ooh, and that was time. another show that as a kid, my brother and sister and I were just insane about that. I mean, I... not only Rocky and Bullwinkle with uh, Natasha and Boris, but then you had Fractured Fairy Tales, you had Commander McBrag, you had all these different that were included in this show. And it was it was just wonderful. And when I first came out to LA, there was actually off of Sunset Boulevard, they had a store there um, and a giant statue of um, Bullwinkle and Rocky. Giant, huge yes. colored statue. Yes. It's yes. back on Sunset Boulevard now. Is it? Yeah, it was put oh, no, back on just oh, 2020. Fantastic. Yeah, they were meant oh. to have an unveiling, but COVID canceled it. So, uh, but it's yeah. on there now. Yeah, oh, that's unveiling. wonderful. I didn't know that. That's great. I have to nip down there and see it. I will, for sure. I'll get a picture with it. That's Yes, wonderful. yes. And send it to me. I will. Absolutely sweating. I'm sweating. Uh, product, product endorsement from Primark. I'm wearing Warner Brothers pajamas. Don't ask. Um, also, it's good timing because, of course, Pat's also done voice work for Warner Brothers. So that is absolutely perfect. Um, you know, it's, it's a nice, nice little perfect product placement, should I say. Exactly. Um, yeah, definitely. We were just talking about Primark because Pat's actually been to the UK. So she's actually been to Primark. And yeah, isn't it just like a treasure trove? You're like, you don't know what you're gonna, you're gonna find when you go in there, and it's just absolutely amazing. Like I was, in, I was in shock. I I got some fabulous earrings that I loved, and I and a top that I wear to this day. And I mean, I just want to come back. I want to come back to to Britain. Very, yeah. very badly. I want to go to the countryside because, as much as I love, oh, well, I'd like to do both. What am I yeah, saying? Yeah, come to the pool. I'm welcoming you. With oh, and look at my shirt. Here's, here's <gasps> American my shirt. Oh, oh that's go. nice, Tony. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Gosh. Yeah, I'll I'll be welcoming you with open arms next time you come to England. Trust me. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I, American Tale was absolutely. Well, that was my first film. And uh, the way I got that, because Steven Spielberg was the producer on that, uh, they just asked for, um, they asked for us to self tape to make our own little cassette tapes and send them in, which was unusual, because at the time you would go in and record at your agents, right? And, uh, and so (laughs) I based him on a kid in my neighborhood. Uh, This, this, Little Italian kid, you know, he was, uh, he would always come up to me and go, give me a cigarette. You got a cigarette? And I would say, you're, you're never going to grow. You're, (laughs) you're small and you'll remain that way. Um, And so I just based that on him and sent the tape in. And uh, Don Bluth told me afterwards, it's another brilliant, brilliant guy, Don Bluth. If you could ever, ever interview him, you would love that because of all the films he's done oh yeah. and he's just the nicest man ever but um 
he said that he told me afterwards, he said, Steven Spielberg heard the tape and said, I want to meet that kid. And I said, oh, <laughs> he said to Steven Spielberg, that's a woman. It's not a kid <laughs> doing that voice. I was like, oh, crap. Does he want to meet me? What? Yeah. Oh, but that's funny. amazing. Though. Like, yeah. If that's the thing about voice acting, as you said before, it's usually ladies who like voice like boys and stuff like that. They sound so convincing. I know. Well, and and this was great because uh, what he did, I don't know that they still do this. They might. They probably do. He he videoed me as I recorded so that he got all of my movements and everything that I did as Tony so that he could incorporate him into the character when when the character was finally animated and drawn. Yeah. He used all of those, you know, hey, you know, these things. So it was it was great. Very fun. That's, that's brilliant. Wow. Um oh, what was that? There was there was an American tell film that um I was just thinking about, but I can't remember what it was called. I'm trying to think. Um uh, Well, there was what? Five All Goes West. There was Five All Goes West and then and uh and then the regular American tale that you know Tony was really featured in and that was the one that I love the best. You know. The Mystery of the Night Monster, that's the one I'm thinking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, have, I wasn't involved in that. I don't Yeah, you were. I was? You were was you I were Tony and Mrs. Abernathy, yeah. Just on Wikipedia. Oh my god. You know, I really need <laughs> I need to sit down with you. <laughs> you're like a you're like a memory drug. It's fantastic, you know. I'm more than happy to chat at any time. Oh, that that's lovely. That's yeah. lovely. Yeah, um, so American Tale was a big deal for me. Um, I got to go to the premiere, and uh, it was my first premiere of something that you know I had done that was on the screen, and so it was all it was all totally fabulous, and uh, it kind of launched things as well. Um, Smurfs went on for quite some time, um, and that was that was fantastic too. Um, yeah, 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 definitely, really, oh. really good. HB was wonderful too because then if you worked there they would put you into like monster tales you know uh the interstitials that i that we did yeah monster tales was great because you know i had to do uh, elsa was a she was half dog half parrot so it was yeah. just interesting to combine those two into one character and then angel was just a fish and uh and i actually made her a little british i I based her on uh, on a British actor who you know, British talked actor. like he was yeah. like this. You know, he was very, very much like this. David Attenborough? And no, James Mason. Uh, oh, do you know, oh do you, yes, of course. Oh, my gosh. James Mason. That's who I based it on. Angel. Oh Why did I say David Attenborough? Yeah. But then it was great because I could do a parrot you know i could do that and then to add that to crazy elsa and made the dog that would occasionally yeah i don't know i don't know you know you would go off into that it was just it was madness but that's what made it that's what made it so fun and then you had jonathan winters you had tim curry oh, fantastic charlie adler who is still one of my dearest friends to this day uh -huh. and he's a he's such a brilliant voiceover actor he also was on broadway uh years wow. ago and then i did now know. yeah and now he's a director and he directs any number of you know animated shows yeah. so those yeah, he's, yeah wow it's lovely i i'm just so fortunate i'm very fortunate to have worked with the people that i have you know you should you should feel really lucky i do very much so yeah. and yeah uh, I end up, you know, I do improv too. I've been with the same improv group for 35 years. So uh, that makes a big difference in what you do as well. Oh, that's really cool. Wow. Yeah. And speaking of meeting people, of course, you said before your daughter, May, May Whitman, for those yes. of you who do not know. Um, yes. So what, what, who, what, when, where, why? Who did she meet when she came to the sessions or auditions with you? Who did she... Do you, do you know any voice actors she became friends with? Of course, like she's an adult now, and she's you know she's done. I think she was Tinkerbell in like the uh, the Disney fairies movies. Yeah, that's yes. that's where I predominantly know her from. Yeah, and uh, where else has she done? She Avatar. Did, she, 
Avatar, yeah. Um, and she was also uh, Johnny Bravo. Uh, she was in Little Susie. Uh, that was one of her first big ones. Yeah, yeah. Little and Susie. she was uh, April O'Neil in the uh, 2012 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's right. That's right. Yeah. She and she and uh, and Rob Paulson, who was I guess he was Raphael. Uh, the yeah. two of them had kind of a love relationship, which always amused the hell out of all of us, you know, it was, it was great. <laughs> and then I got to do Mona Lisa, uh, back in the day, which was also very, very fun. And I have, well, I have her character over there on the, I have the little, the little Mona Lisa character. Um, yeah. But Ooh. yeah, that was that was fun. Unfortunately, uh, they didn't feel like boys would be too crazy about Mona Lisa, so yeah. it didn't it didn't continue into a long thing. Which later on, there were a lot of people that to this day, like why why didn't we see why don't we see more of Mona Lisa? You know, and I think they were just afraid that she wouldn't be as well embraced. Back then, they tried to hook it up with the toy, you know, and they were, they were convinced that boys wouldn't buy Mona Lisa because she was a girl. I mean, even back then, you know, not great with the gals. So yeah, you know, it's gotten yeah. better. It's gotten better. Yeah. 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 So yeah. who did she, who did she uh, get to be? Well, I mean, I've just seen, yeah, it said something about Skull Island and she's one of the main roles. So that's really cool. That yes. was just released today. It was just released today. June really? 22nd. Yeah, on Netflix. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to look. I'm gonna. Oh, have to you should. Out. Yeah. So, who who did she get to meet? What did she get to meet? Any voice actors when she was like little? Or you're talking about May, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, all of them. I mean, because she would she would be with me, uh, if if I were in a recording session, unless something, you know, I couldn't get coverage because we had a wonderful nanny um, who was with her. Uh, Araceli was, was with her. And when, when I would go off and work, she would just be there with May, which was great. And then uh, the minute I'd come back, she'd do cleaning and some housework and things like that. And uh, so I really relied on her a great deal when I was working. But yeah. there were times when she wasn't available, and if she wasn't available, then I just took May with me. So May got to meet everybody. And uh, I know, I remember especially going to the premiere of something at Cartoon Network and oh. having, tr she just disappeared with Tress McNeil. I didn't see her the entire <gasps> evening. Tress, <laughs> Tress just came oh. up. She oh. goes, she goes to May, she goes, you want, you want some popcorn? You want to know i know where the popcorn is i know where the sodas are i know where it all is and she just the two of them left and i was like i okay <laughs> and they just had the best time oh she's i love her so much she's I, an absolutely amazing human being and talent she's incredible yeah honestly like it's she only really does like very rare conventions but someone i know who lives a few minute, uh, minutes from me, she's actually flying out to see Tress at a convention in September. And I'm how, so jealous. How amazing. And where is that convention? Uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Ah, gotcha. Banex. Um, so yeah, so Tress, uh, I reached out to her for my documentary, you know, my Bill Scott documentary. I'm not sure, you know. Did I, I haven't know. seen it, no. Yeah, I, I, I finished it a few years ago, yeah. Oh my God, I must watch. How yeah, great. It's, it's about two hours long. Um, Good. So did that. Um, I reached out to Tress for it, and she was like, "I hope one day we can meet up and stuff like that." But this was through her agent. This was like through her directly. And ever since right. then, I've never been able to reach her since to either send her the documentary or just really just stay in touch with her. It's just been so hard, you know. Just Tress is uh, Tress is usually kind of she's very private. She's yeah. a private girl, you know, yeah. and and kind of always has been. I mean, most of the time when I've seen her, it's been at auditions or parties or memorials that's pretty much where we end up getting together um and we've worked together we worked together a couple of times uh but um she just she's an amazing amazing person i just adore her i just want her to do a uk convention that's that's all i ask that's all yeah. i ask yeah, yeah. exactly not their convention people yeah yeah, yeah. um 
actually, okay, I've got to bring this up, okay, because I know I mentioned it at the start and I haven't brought it up since. Um, the US dub of Tugs. Oh, I, I'm not going to be helpful for you in this. <laughs> That's okay. I just want to know if you remember anything because I know. I don't. I don't. It's. Like I said, after a while, things kind of get together. I should probably have just grabbed my IMDb and gone back over it and, you know, before meeting with you like this. But um, I, I, I really don't. Can you, can you, who did I do? What did I do? Can you even tell me? <laughs> I'm not entirely, thing is like, I'm not entirely sure. Wait, let me just listen to this video. Okay, sorry. I just, I saw an episode of it and it's, it's an unofficial dub, but basically, it was a one-off dub done by um, Christopher Borough Productions, uh, featuring the voice cast of Charlie Adler, Jack Angel, Michael Bell, Susan Blue, Ed Gilbert, um, you, Rob Paulson, and Alan Oppenheimer. Wow. All fabulous people. <laughs> I mean, you can't do any better. You know, you've got yeah. some Smurfs in there, too. I mean, Alan Oppenheimer, oh, God. I, I bought my first car from out here. From Alan Oppenheimer, he oh, had really? an old Volvo. He had an old Volvo, and uh, and uh, I I had I came out with my VW. I had an old VW, which is a stick shift, and um, a stick shift in Los Angeles is a little tough when you're going over canyons and stuff, constantly having to do that. Plus, I had no air conditioning because um, I'd lived in Colorado, and you kind of really didn't need air conditioning in Colorado. And so mm -hmm. I bought this old Volvo from Alan, and mm -hmm. uh, it was hilarious. Uh, they called it Knit Bomb. They called the car Knit Bomb. Anyway, and we also I also saw him in um, Sunset Boulevard. He was in that with Glenn Close. He played Cecil oh. B. DeMille, and we went and saw that on stage, which was fantastic. So. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. I found it on YouTube, but basically the audio was very poor quality because it was recorded off a television set. So it says here, in 1989, Robert Cardona set up a deal with American producer Christopher Brer to, to purchase a Tugs pilot aimed for the US market, featuring Brooklyn, Bronx, and New Jersey accents. This version was a sample of what Tugs could have been like in the American market. This is a very interesting piece featuring cast from popular 90s American cartoons such as Transformers, G.I. Joe, Tom and Jerry, Tailspin, to name a few. Sadly, this version never saw the light of day until a recent leak from a Star Tugs Trust screening. The audio was meticulously repaired and improved by MK Instrumental and pieced together visually by the Star Switcher. Unknown to us, Zoran and Zack set off to foil our mission. Meanwhile, Ten Cents and Sunshine were working delivering fuel for Sally. Pretty sure that was Jack Angel. Yeah. Yeah. Hi there, Ten Cents. Who's your new friend? Sunshine, meet Sally. She's our seaplane. Uh, 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 hello, Sally. Thanks for the fuel, Sally. I'm taking off uh, soon. Can't wait around, Sally. <laughs> this is a big day for the Star Tugs. We're bringing in the Duchess Ocean Liner. The Duchess Ocean Well, don't be strangers. We won't. Bye, Sally. Oh, my gosh. How funny. What are they doing? I wish the audio were clear. God, she's so cute. I, I would have so loved to have had the, the toy. You know, that so that you were Sally Seaplane. Yeah, I think so. Ooh, yes, there southern, we go. The Southern go. Bell, a Southern Bell kind of Sally Seaplane. You know. Yes. Yeah. So that was really fun. Um. So, yeah. Um. I studied uh, for the past three years. I've been majoring in performing arts acting. So it's mainly just Good you know boosting you. on the voiceover Good stuff. For you, thank so, you like for can thank you for keeping our profession alive. That's. What You're I, welcome. You're and welcome, especially Pat. British shows. I'm telling you, British shows have it all over our shows, in my opinion. I mean, we cannot watch enough police procedurals of <laughs> British things. We just finished an Irish one called mm -hmm. Love Hate. That I've not was, heard of that one. Oh, God. It was, it was violent, but fantastic. Just really, really good. Uh, we seek them out and uh just to find as many there's one called suspects that they actually improvised um the cast went and spent time 
at, you know, with the, I don't, I don't think it was at Scotland Yard, but it was at some police precinct there, if you call them precincts, I can't remember what yeah, they're Yeah, shopping center precinct, you know, yeah. There you go. And and they spent a lot of time there and then just came back and improvised the whole thing. And it's fantastic. It's so good. So anyway. That's really cool. Yeah, I was going to ask what are some of your favorite British shows or sitcoms or comedies, you know. Oh, my God. Trying to remember the names of these things. I, we're not really so much into the sitcoms, although Faulty Towers was. You sounded British then when you said, like, oh, my God. I literally oh. sounded British. I because like, I watched too much of it. It's the problem. I try to do that. You know, Jeff and I, whenever we hear the word Manchester, we both, my husband and I go, Manchester. That's what we say right away is Manchester. Because <laughs> that's how we heard it pronounced on the show. Um, yeah. But uh, um, yeah, to hear uh, to hear the, the Scottish, there's Yorkshire, there's Cockney, there's upper, there's the Queen's English. The What do they call that? The proper, not proper. Uh, the, RP. The, RP. RP yeah. English. RP, which is like, I guess that's the received top. pronunciation. Exactly. Posh, yeah. yeah. Queen's English. Posh. Yeah. Posh. There we go. The Queen's English. Uh, oh, how do you feel about about Charles and and the King and all that stuff? Oh, uh, I don't really keep up with the royals. To be fair, like I'm one of those gotcha. people who I don't do politics. I don't mm -hmm. do royalty. It's not like I don't mm -hmm. like them. It's just like I just keep well away from them because I know you it's just, just too much drama. Everyone, there's going to be some people out there who will either love it, discussing it, or hate, or you know anything like that. I'm just on the fence, you know. I just That's, like, you know we've we have we're just going through the worst period of our lives. I just, I just like voice acting. That's that's all I that's all I and, that, and you know what? You're wise. You're wise because you do <laughs> what you, you love and love what you do makes all the sense in the world to me. Yes, yeah. that's that's the motto I go by because I know one of one of the characters that I am um, uh, have on Animal Crossing in my little village. She was like, "Oh yeah, I took the school count." Oh yeah, it was like uh, one of my friends who kept doodling in her book has now become a comic book artist. She just followed the school counselor's advice: do what you love and love what you do. That's exactly right. I'm like, and I'm if you can do that, I mean, you know, with with me, the voice stuff. Yeah just was so fantastic because I could delve into all these characters that already lived in my brain that I was doing in improv anyway. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, um, and, and the woman who created all the improvisational games for the theater, Viola Spolin, uh, we were lucky enough to study. We were the last group to study with her. She was wow. 83 years old when she taught us. And she taught wow. us how to play her games, and we've been playing them ever since. And oh, that's so cool. It's so magical because everything is made up on the spot. We don't have any, a lot of like Second City and Upright Citizens Brigade, a lot of, they do fantastic work, don't get me wrong, but they do yeah. a lot of set pieces, you know, that they improvised originally and then they add to and so like All our stuff is just made up in the moment and then goes yeah. around. If you ever yeah. come to visit, I'll bring yes. you to one of our workshops. You can okay. come to one of our workshops and make, make suggestions. Uh, yeah, of course. So that we can, yeah, yeah, it would be About fun. My, yeah, I'll just think of all the stuff that I learned in college. I call these warm-up games that we tend to play and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, just to bring it over to America, just spreading it outside this small little community. It would just well, be so Who did magical. you have? You had Johnstone uh, was British, right? Wasn't he Wasn't he the British guy I, that I did think improv? So. improv? Anyway, so. Viola, Viola was just incredible because she said, it's not from here. It's from, I can't show you my stomach, but it's from the gut. It's not from the brain. Because if you try and improvise from the brain, then you have to think. And you have to yeah. think then you're trying. And yeah. her big thing was don't try. Never try, just let it happen. Don't try. Yeah, yeah. you know, so it's yeah. been, a brilliant, it's been I, the saving grace of all of us. And now we do it on Zoom every Wednesday, so. Yeah, oh, that's you know. so cool, wow. Yeah, I had to do an improvised piece, sort of like a comedy piece for my um, final exam, practical exam that was last month, it's quite fun. Yeah, it's a comedy skit I did with another girl in my class. It was like an Abbott and Costello, who's on first thing. Who's, like who's on first? Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know who's on first. We did that. Uh, and, uh, you know. Is that the best bit ever? 
It yeah, just... we, we couldn't remember half of it, so we just had to improv and it just made it even better. <laughs> and I don't know is on third. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so and then who's pitching tomorrow? <laughs> That's right. Oh my god. Yeah, oh, so funny. So funny. They were honestly. brilliant. They were brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, here, here's actually something I'd like to talk about. Just two things real quick before we move on to our last little topic. Um, Extreme goes, oh, oh, actually, maybe a few more things. Uh, I know because you did Rugrats. Um, just these yes. things on my notes. Um, Harold, Harold Frumpkin. Harold yeah. Frumpkin, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Harold, Harold was super fun because he was a toady. Uh, he just followed Angelica around like a lap dog. He just adored her and anything she did was, you know, perfectly fine with him. And I, and I love the fact that, you know, he had this little lift too, you know, he had a lift and, and, oh, Angelica. And then when they aged, I was able to do him a little older, but he never lost the lift. You know, that was still there. So, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. fun, very fun yeah. to do. And, you know, with Cheryl, uh, Chase, Cheryl Chase, Angelica. Yeah. And Charlie Adler was directing. Yeah. And he's just done the reboot as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's really very, cool. Very, very fun. Um, yeah. You did Curious George, of course, with Frank Welker. And Frank Welker and Susan Blue. And Susan Blue. Yep, 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 yep. She directed that. Yeah. She became, I mean, as brilliant as she was, a voice actor. Uh, you, you do get hired a lot more if you're a director than oh, yeah. if yeah. you're an actor. So uh, she became a director and, and did brilliantly at it. And she directed all the Ghostbusters that I did. The yeah, Extreme, Extreme, Extreme Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. And you just did a really show episode uh, recently. That's right. Tara Strong, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. really cool. She was um, then, when she back then she was Tara Cherendoff. She hadn't even yeah. got, you know, this was right when she came from Canada. Oh on. yeah, yeah. Like she, she, was, like, she, so she was doing that. She was also doing the new Batman adventures. She was doing 101 Dalmatians. She was, she was living Pulp of Gold. She was living the life, you know. She was yes. doing. She, she was like, she went from there to like whoop, all the way up there. Like, wow. Exactly. So cool. I love exactly. Tara. She's voice directed me for a few things, and she's just been one of my dearest friends. She was one of the. Uh, she was the first voice actor I ever met. Um, oh really? One of the first I befriended. Yeah. So that was. Really oh nice. Fun. Yeah, uh, she's a great person. Great. Yeah, I miss her. She was meant to come to England again this year, but she had to cancel. It was the same convention I met these four at. Oh. <laughs> Rob Paulson. Yeah, she'd been waiting for Rob Paulson to come to the UK for like years. And it finally happened. How fantastic. Um, I was going to say, oh, yes. Um, uh, uh, Adventures of the Gummy Bears. How cool is that? Okay. Did that. Little quick story about Ursa. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when I took Michael Bell's class, one of the things he impressed upon us yeah. was never do a voice that's difficult, like that's too hard for you to to do. And I paid absolutely no attention to that whatsoever. So yeah. when I did Ursa, she was, you know, strong and she had this great, you know, kind of rasp to her voice. Right. Yeah. And by the end of every episode, I was like, <laughs> Because to put that rasp in there constantly, and then with a lot of, because Ursa's stuff was always big and strong and intense. Yeah, yeah. And yelling with that voice, you know, is, that'll that'll do you in real quick. <laughs> so I had to have my fisherman's friends there, uh, yeah. you know, popping those like crazy. But uh, she was very fun to do. She was very fun to do. And then that was with Katie Lee and- uh, Love Katie, she's brilliant. Uh, the sweetest, yes. sweetest gal, and just has that little voice. That's who she is. I know, you know? yeah. Oh my gosh. And then, of course, you're the um. Where were they? Where were they from? Um, this is gonna do my head in now when I look this up. Um, I, I can't remember what is it. Us, us, Asalia or something. Yeah, this is Asalia. This is just Perfect. me who's not watched the show in years. So, oh my name. god, Asalia, well done, you. That's exactly right. There's a British phrase. Well the Barbix. The Barbix. The Barbix. Well, that was the name of the bears, but they were from Ursalia. You were absolutely right. About yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm having to have a look. Why have they, they've, they've erased most of the characters from the bar, the bar, the Barbix from the Wikipedia page, which is quite weird. Gummy bears, Barbix. That's weird. I, 
I know it's so weird because I know I know because Dana Hill voiced Buddy, um, and then you know Dana, my heart my heart hurts. Um, we did Duckman together. Oh yes, Duckman. Because I did Fluffy and Uranus, and uh, and she. Did you remember? Did you ever watch Duckman? Never seen Duckman. Oh my god. Well, it's an adult cartoon. Yeah, I presume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason Alexander plays Duckman. Yeah. And I played these two little bears. As a matter of fact, hold on two seconds. Oh. And I can show you. I have a bunch of things like this, but here they are. This is Fluffy and Uranus. These were the two little bears. They worked for Duckman. Okay? Oh, right. Okay. And, um, they uh one of them talked like this you know completely like this and then the other one was a breathier version of the same thing but duck man would kill them he would kill them in various ways he'd put them in a blender he would put them into a ceiling fan he would do he would just kill them and then they'd show up again the next episode yeah um but dana uh, Dana played uh, Charles and uh, mm-hmm. the son of um, uh, Ajax, who was Dweezil Zappa. Um, and uh, Dana was a diabetic, and um, which she never hid. I mean, she would inject herself right while she was sitting there with you and, you know, be fine. But she ended up going, getting into a diabetic coma. And, and so they had me take over her role as Charles and yeah. I, it, it, it never really felt right to me, you know, <laughs> because when somebody's doing a character, they are that character. And I tried the best I could to just imitate what she'd done, but I'm sure it wasn't anywhere near as good as she was. Um, but I did, I went and saw her in the hospital and um, kind of got to say goodbye to her. And yeah, she's only and, 32. That was really young. <sighs> diabetes you know yeah uh, yeah it, it can get you you know yeah. so anyway yeah she was the spunkiest little gal you'd ever want to meet you know once again with that kind of voice you know she come in the room hey hey pat how you doing you know i mean that's who she was yeah, you know? yeah. so uh yeah, i miss her she was a doll she was a doll yeah. really good Duckman yeah. was a lot of fun and and Charlie, did Charlie know this other guy directed Duckman? I, did Charlie come along and direct Duckman? Because he did a lot of Klasky Chupo stuff. I don't remember if he did Duckman. I didn't even realize Duckman was Klasky Chupo. Yes, yes, it was done at Klasky Chupo. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, I can see it now. Yeah, I can see go. the style. Yeah. Ooh, no, and I'm then uh, another one that I love doing and that Susan directed was The Tick. Um, oh, the tick with Townsend Coleman himself. Oh, my God. Hilarious. Just Hello. hilarious. I mean, we would just howl laughing. And uh, Cam was in that, too. Cam Clark was on that show. Yeah, and Rob Paulson was. Then Rob, absolutely. And uh, and I got to play Sally Vacuum, and I, and Jess Harnell was on that show, too. Uh, he played the human bullet, and I played his wife. The human Ooh. bullet's wife which was very fun but sally vacuum was the most fun because she was like a news person that everything kind of sounded the same when she would Ooh. you know and and that was very fun to do um the tick was great it was such an inventive show and kind of unusual this kind of anti superhero hero you know yeah uh, kind of a bumbling guy who would still get the job done somehow you know it was it was great fun great fun yeah yeah that's so that's really that's really cool um have you ever about- seen any of the tick at all have you ever watched any of the tick i feel ashamed to say no well no don't be I ashamed need to. i need to i need yeah, to yeah you should watch the tick and you should watch duck man duck man is like so strange jason alexander is so brilliant in it he really is as duck man and Nancy Travis as uh, Bernice. Um, very, very fun. Yeah, definitely. Um, would, going back yeah. to uh, Gummy Bears. Yeah, and there was also uh, Walker Edmund uh, 
Edmiston, who was um, Sir Thornbury, um, yes. Peter Cullen, who was Gritty Gummy, um, and yes. Brian Cummings, who was Grubby as well. That's right. That's right. They all had the G names. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they were, and they were all fantastic. I loved Walker. Such a sweet, sweet man, you know. Um, getting to work with these people was, it was genius. I mean, it was just brilliant. It was like a highlight in your life. Yeah. And, uh, and you learned every single episode, you learned something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Each time it's, you found. so cool. Yeah. Really yeah. good. Oh, yeah. And, um, Oh, what was I going to say? Oh, yes. Uh, some of them, not a lot of people bring up Sabre Rider and the Star Sheriffs, which uh, also had, um, I think, yeah, it was Rob and Cam, I think, might have been. Maybe, Peter Cullen. Uh, Peter Cullen, yeah, he was in it as well. That. And wasn't Townie in that too? I wasn't Townsend was, yeah. in that? Like, it's all. It's usually all three of them, apart from Barry Gordon. Pat Fraley. Pat Fraley was Pat in it. Pat Fraley. Oh yes, Cam Clark's cousin. Actually, yeah. I need to speak to Pat again. I, I just been reminded. Oh, I need to do another. He's a wacko. Video. He's a complete yeah. total wacko. I just love yeah, him. Yeah, I did. Um, do yeah, it. it was really fun, and that was one of my first, uh, one of my other first series, and yeah. where I got to play. Uh, it, it was great to play a young uh, female heroine that was uh you know a fighter a warrior kind of yeah. not warrior like ursa but you know i mean because it was really more my voice definitely more my voice as april you know yeah and, uh but you know you, with the added air and the youth and the strength and all that stuff yeah very, yeah very fun yeah. and the interesting part of that i was very pregnant when i did that with may and mm -hmm. uh she he was kind of up on my chest a bit yeah. because she she was breached she was completely turned around inside me Ooh. so she was sort of sitting on my lungs and so i didn't have the air uh that i had had before <laughs> so they would i would have to because you can't be breathing into the mic yeah. you know you can't be doing that so i would have to really be careful to just quietly get my air ready for my line when it came out you know and let it go out and then getting up towards the end getting up on on and off the stool was interesting as well so i love yeah. peter cullen oh i haven't seen him in so many years i just love him yeah he's so just in the uh, uh new transformers film rise of the beasts so he's uh Fantastic. back on the cinema screen i know yeah. i know yes. i miss him it was really that's that's literally my computer screen server, me, Pete, and Frank, and they started uh, arguing in uh, Optimus and Megatron's voices, like, she's mine, Megatron, no, I'm Optimus, she's mine. And then, like, I had, like, a Me Optimus and Megatron shit. I'm, I'm going to have to send you all of these, because there's, like, there's so much good photos from when I met them. Like, oh, my gosh, like, I just want to make it. It's just so good. Cool. Uh, I'd love to come back to England sometime, and and if I do, I will definitely get hold of you, because uh, we should we should go out and... Yeah, she's go to oh a pub God. and have lunch. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Like, oh a my pub. God. So many, so many, you have to be a Weatherspoons pub crawl or something like that. Oh, that would be nice. That would be <laughs> nice. I don't drink very much anymore. But I don't. I, I don't either. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I might have one pint, but that would be about it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but I still loved going when we were there staying with my friend and we went and met some of her friends at a pub. And I, I don't know, do people in Britain pick up like rounds for other people? Is that done? Sometimes, sometimes. I, I mean, so. yeah. I guess it was not, maybe not with these people because I went in and went into the pub. First of all, I was shocked because they were watching baseball on television. And I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> that's American baseball you're watching. And the bartender was like, yeah, so yeah, we love it, love it. You know, and I was just so surprised. Um, but they were they were great. I bought them around and they delivered the round at the table and they were all just like, Wow, she bought us a round. Yeah. <laughs> surprised, like so it was fun. It was great. I got to go to Brighton. We went to Brighton. Oh uh, wow, that's really cool. Really beautiful. Kate has a friend who lives on the beach there. Um Oh wow. Oh, it's fun to visit yeah. Brighton. It was yeah. Really yeah. Wow. Oh, I'm jealous. Now I want to go to Brighton. The pier. 
on the pier yeah yeah yeah, yeah definitely yeah yeah um i have a few honorable mentions before we get on to the last main topic and the three okay. honorable mentions are uh new kids on the block do you remember oh doing God. work for that show wow and this is for friend taylor because my friend taylor literally obsessed with obsessed. the anime show not all i remember is that lauren lester was like one of the boys in it which yeah, makes that's it right. even funnier yeah, yeah robin himself yeah, yeah. That was funny. All I remember was dum dum da da dum 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 da dum. You know that. Um, yeah. I I I'm not sure who I played in there. It must have been some girl, maybe. You said you did additional voices, so probably just you know yeah, different just roles a, over the course. Probably a stuff. teen, a yeah. teen falling madly over the boys. Who knows? You know, something like that. Yeah, yeah, of course. And um, uh, for the Adventures of Super Ten, now this I want to know eagerly about. Do you remember working on that? For the Adventures of what? Super Ted, the Hanna Barbera. Super Ted, oh my God. Wow. You it were was a... Mike Young. You know, it was a Welsh show. It aired in the UK and then he brought it over to America. And then Hanna Barbera redid it with um, uh, serial animations. You know, the, the ba- it was uh-huh. literally at the end of the, the original credits of Super Ted, it literally says Made in Wales. Wow. All animated in Wales, Cardiff, you know. Happened. Incredible. Yeah. Where my, oh. my people come from. Um, oh. Yes, I know. I have to go. I have to go. Um, okay, bye. I, uh, no. <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure who I did on that show, but I do remember but the show. A character itself. called Prince Raj, Raj, Rajesh or something like that. Oh, okay. I'm so it was a boy. Look. It was probably a yes. young boy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And if it, if it was Indian, I don't know. You know, mm. I'm not sure if he was I'm, Indian or not. I'm trying to find it now. There is barely any episodes on YouTube. Just of you know, it's not really that covered. I guess. Right. I don't. Well, it said it was Danny Cooksey, but on Wikipedia it says it was you. But then again, you can't trust Wikipedia because well, it's just wow. I have no idea. I know Wikipedia. <laughs> It's probably just going to sell IMDb here, just additional voices, I think. Um, I think it's Wikipedia that says I'm married to someone I'm not married to and uh, that I went to school and... Said you were additional voices. Strange place. Yeah. So I wouldn't... Anytime I'm additional voices, then I get to do three different voices, which is wonderful and really fun. But God knows I can't remember what they were. I just did them in the moment. And then up they went, you know. Yeah, but I didn't yeah. know. I didn't realize Super Ted was from Wales. You know, yeah, they didn't... it was made in Wales. Fantastic. Yeah, had had a British cast uh, and also like a original Welsh dub, uh, the original Welsh version, uh, made by Mike Young, who then uh, obviously came over to America and formed Mike Young Productions. So he did a lot of stuff for America, and now he's a uh, his company called Splash Entertainment. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he's based in a. I can't remember where it's based, but it does a lot of. They do a lot of uh, things. Uh, I know they did one of the biggest things they did is the Norm of the North movie franchise. Uh, okay. They're based in Los Angeles. Yeah, Cabillion is their um, kids' TV channel. So they do a lot of things. Yeah. So um, yeah, Mike's really lovely. I've had him on my podcast before. So very lovely man. Um, nice. The final little honourable mention is Johnny Bravo, which, of course, oh. you worked. May was on that as well. I've got to ask, because you voiced the adult version of May's character, so you actually Correct. did you get to be in a recording session with her? Um, actually, funnily, no. Uh, I, I, I think the first, the first session she did, I played a woman uh, mm-hmm. on the show. Yeah. And then that time we were together. Um, but after that, she was little Susie at, with Jeff Bennett, who was Johnny Bravo, who's still a very close friend of mine. And his wife, Susie, is also a very close friend of mine. Um, awesome. Yeah. I Jeff on my show. I said, oh, people on my show. Like, oh, my gosh. He's fantastic. He's just fantastic. What a brilliant guy he is. Um, and he, yeah. So May got to do little Susie with him. Brenda Vaccaro uh, played Mama. And uh, uh, Van Partible was the writer director of it, who we we just loved. You'd like having Van on too, because Van, Ooh. yeah, very clever, very cool guy. Um, but definitely Jeff Bennett. Oh my God, he's he's fantastic. Mm. If you want, I'll put the bug in his ear about 
Oh yes, please. That would mean the world to me. I mean, I oh. did try to. I, I tried to get a thing from him on Cameo, but he's not of it. It says he's temporarily unavailable, so I can't buy a Cameo from him. You know, Cameo that uh, the app where. I think yes, you I've heard of this thing. Yeah. I know Charlie's done it. He mentioned it that he had done it, but you you paid to have a time talking to them. I, I'm not. You paid to have like a video message from them. I see. I, so see. I just bought one from Wilfred L recently. Um, and okay. I got him to say hi to me as Terry McGuinness in Batman Beyond, which of course oh you did. Oh my god! Very Whoa! Fun. Oh my gosh! It's opening so many tabs on my computer. It's slowing my computer down. It's like just bear with me Uh-oh. one second. It's it, it tends to do this. Um, I see. Oh, why is it do? Why is it? Oh my gosh! Right. Um. Well. Okay. So. Well. Might as well. Just real quick. How did May get the part of little Susie in Johnny Bravo? Did she just audition, or did they come to you first? Um, I'm trying to remember. I think uh, Van reached out for her because she was young. Yeah. But she'd done a little something on the Wild Thornberries at Klasky yeah. Chupo. She'd done a little something on that. She'd done that other thing I told you about when she was even younger than when she yeah. first started out for John Matthews. Yeah. Um, on Uncle, it was, it was Uncle Elephant and something else. Anyway, mm-hmm. fun things. And yeah. uh, I think then Van requested her, and it was another one where she went in and he had her read, and then he went, well, I want you to do this. And she was like, now? Because she she learned, what I taught her from the beginning was, if you can learn to love the process of auditioning, uh, then if you get the job, it's the cherry on top of the Sunday, right? Um, yeah. If you you just need to learn to love the auditioning process and and she had she'd enjoyed it she would play with other kids if there were other kids there auditioning she'd always bring toys for them to play with on the floor and the whole thing and um but this particular one if i recall correctly i think it was just the two of us went in and uh i brought her in and she just did it she just came up with little Susie immediately and became little Susie immediately. And wow. Van just said, okay, I want you to do this. And she just turned to me and goes, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> destined destined uh, for a good career then. Yeah, because um, you never learn right there in the moment. So it was no, magic. No, of course so. not, no. Um, the final topic, uh, and real quick, I'll have to talk about this in five minutes, so I'll make it as quick as I can, um, is Scooby-Doo in the Ghoul School, where you voiced the character of Elsa Frankentine. And exactly. of course you did it with Rusi Taylor, Susan Blue, um, Patty Maloney, and um, Marilyn Schreffler. Marilyn Schreffler. Yes. Yeah. Um so um so they did so they did the that, you did the film obviously and then mm-hmm. you can't, you guys came back apart from Patty and Marilyn because Marilyn had already passed and Correct. Patty had, had retired by that point so they got uh, Natalie Palamides I I probably just I think, that wrong. Uh, I, think Lee, I didn't yeah who voiced Buttercup and Bubbles from the Powerpuff Girls reboot, of course, where else is a Carson Network show, but they were voiced over their characters. I'm not sure. I've not heard their voices, but I've heard you and Susan and Rusi do it. So right. I think it's right. really good. Um, and so it, I'm telling you, and Glynis Johns, who is British. You, yeah. Did you know Glynis Johns? I didn't, I didn't even know she's... Well, she played the headmistress. She... <laughs> She, 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 with the death of Olivia D. Havilland in 2020, Johns became the oldest living Academy Award nominee in any acting category. And in 2021, with the death of Betty White, she's now the oldest living Disney legend. And she's she still is ni- living now? She's 99. Oh, my God. And she was so fantastic. And I was blown away because, as you know, I, I'm crazy for British actors. And yeah just meeting her was such a treat because she was she was so brilliant you know brits just get up and do it there's not you know that's one of the things i love about them uh is they just get up and do that there's none of this fumfering around with you know method acting and all of that stuff they think that's just rot and and i understand (laughs) i love that that same kind of spirit that they have Uh, jeremy piven when he did um mr selfridge I remember him talking about this, saying, yeah. you know, 
which by the way, I'm dying to go to Selfridges someday. I have to go. I just, my daughter. Yeah, was just yeah you do. Yeah, yeah. Last yeah. year, my daughter and her boyfriend were there and, and just absolutely, she said, we couldn't even begin to see all of it in a day. She said, it takes, I don't even know how long because there's so many floors and so much wonderful stuff to see. But in any case, Glennis Johns, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And so that particular show was just so much fun because, you know, to do Elsa, I had to make a reform of Frankenstein. And Frankenstein, the most Frankenstein talks is, you know? Yeah. Ugh. So if if Frankenstein was her father, Mm-hmm. I had to come up with something that, you know, made her sound not particularly with it, like she'd been put together by somebody, you know, but still was able yeah. to put sentences together, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then coming back to do it for OKKO OK was just a treat. I can't tell you, every Halloween, it's it's just like top of everyone's list. And I get reams and reams and reams of tweets. Um mm-hmm about it and then we lost Rusi. um yeah which you know so now it's just susan susan and i are the uh, the last two and patty and patty right she's 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 still around but she's retired she's retired yeah yeah she's 87 i think yeah i mean at some point i'll retire i can't think about it right now don't say it oh no you're gonna make me sad pal (laughs) um and reluctant werewolf as well where you voice vanna Vanapyra. Vanapyra, yes. Vanapyra. Oh, that was fun to do. Dig out my DVD and I'm going to whiz around to my brother's on Saturday <laughs> and put it in his PS5 and we're going to watch it because he did say oh. to me that's his favourite. He's like, he said to me uh, last a few years ago, he's like, have you got a lot of werewolf on DVD? Because that's me and me, me and my um, girlfriend at the time, now married, me and my girlfriend want to watch it. I'm like, I didn't know you were into Scooby. He's like, yeah, I love Reluctant Werewolf. I'm like, Okay, well, oh, now wow. I'm going to say to him, well, from this film, I've spoken to BJ Ward, Jim Cummings, you, Alan Oppenheimer, Rob Paulson, and Frank Welker. Oh, how fantastic. Yeah. And then, because so everyone fun. else, unfortunately, has passed away, or well, apart from Brian Mitchell, who was a, I can't get him for an interview because he's too busy, Brian Stokes Mitchell. Um, right. And- oh, so my daughter <laughs> just did a series, a musical series that was all shot in New York that's on Hulu called yeah. Up Here. And Brian yeah. Stokes Mitchell is in it. Oh, yeah. Along. He's known for Broadway, yes. I think he is. Yeah. Yes, very Broadway. In fact, most of the people on this show, if you ever want to watch it, it's on Hulu. It's really fun. It's an original musical. And it's about the kind of based on the life story of the Lopez's who wrote the music for Frozen and Book of Mormon and all of these wonderful shows um it's based on their life story so and my daughter stars in it with uh, a young actor by the name of carlos valdez who was on the flash on tv that's so cool wow yeah. oh my Very gosh cool. so pat what was it like to reprise your role as um okay now i'm stumped because i literally just had the character think up and now i literally can't remember I feel very silly. Um, uh, oh. Elsa Frankenstein. I knew it was an Elsa, but then I was like, Elsa's in Monster Tales. But like, I don't know. Different Elsa. Yeah. Completely yeah. different Elsa. That Elsa was a dog parrot. This Elsa was actually Frankenstein's daughter. Um, yeah. It was great. It was coming home again. You know, I mean, there are certain characters that you do that reside in a certain place a dusty drawer in my brain, I guess, whatever you want to call it, that just spring open when they come back to life. And of course, it was really funny because Susan came in going, I don't remember what I did. I don't remember. And I went, did you record I, together? Yes. All Susan five of great. you, including Natalie and Kristen. That's right. For wow. OKKO, OK they put us all in there, which was really I'm wonderful. jealous, man. They, we all got wow. to do it together. Uh, and it was so wonderful to just be together again because, you know, we hadn't really worked together in a long time. Uh, and as it turned out, it was, it was, it was magical for me because then we lost Rusi and, uh, yeah. I had just put a call into her like the week before I think to get, cause she wanted to get together and, and go out and have lunch oh, or dinner together. Yeah. Yeah. But 
in a way, I was sort of happy because, you know, she met Wayne, who did the voice of Mickey. She yeah. did the voice of Minnie. They got together. And then he he died before she did. So yeah. I always just think of Mickey and Minnie together again. And, and that makes me really happy. You know? Oh, bless. Yeah, they, they got married and stuff like that. And, like, yeah. um, I spoke to Tara and, like, Rusi, she literally could not reach Rusi for a long time after Wayne died because I think it was, like, the grieving process. And my yeah. Xbox was just turned off. I've just noticed my Xbox turned off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just saw, like, I've a little that. blinking. I saw it. Well, it's so funny because I thought it was something on my desk. I kept going, what is it that's glowing on my desk? But yeah. it's not. It's your it's a, part. Yeah, it's an, it's, an, it's, it's my Xbox. I, 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 I kept it open because I'm... I'm literally Dreamlight Valley, Disney Dreamlight Valley. It's just amazing. Like oh, the, really? little, the little product placement, it's, a, it's a, an open beta. It's basically like Animal Crossing, but Disney themed. It's great. Um, that's all I'll say about it because, wow. uh, you know, it's an open beta. There we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, so that sounds just really beautiful, honestly. It was, like, it was wonderful to, to, just, to just be able to revive those characters again because we had so much fun doing them. And then all these years and years and years go by and then they call and go, we want you to do these again on this show, you know? So it was very fun. Very yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, that's just reminded me, John Mariano, I need to ask you. Okay. Oh, right. I've just he's in my improv group. Is he? Yeah, he's one of my dearest friends. One of oh my, my gosh. What, what other voice actors are in your improv group? I'm curious. Uh, Danny Mann, who <gasps> was- Danny Mann. Oh my gosh, man. Yeah. He's in yeah. my in my improv group. Gail Mathias, who was on Bobby's World and Snorks and Yo, a bunch of things. Pat, yeah. these are voice actors I can't reach. Oh these are, I can't. well, Gail's my best friend. She's my best Whoa. friend. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my so gosh. I talked to her. She's right now in uh Norway. Um, she's in Norway. She's, she's in Norway, and then yeah. they're coming to London. <gasps> wow man i wish i lived in london i was probably living in london they're yeah. gonna be in london for a week so really i know cool. they're gonna be there yeah yeah wow um so anyway yeah she's my best friend so i have anna matthias there's no relation they're spelled differently anna matthias right. is, and she's married to a brit uh, -huh. uh um named uh oh my god alan I can't believe I can't remember Alan's last name right now, but I can't. Um, I will in a minute or two when it'll be too late. Uh, Alan. Oh, shit. Anyway, and he does a lot of work. Um, voiceover work. Alan. Oh, damn. Anyway, Anna's married to Alan, so she's in my group. Then there's Gary Schwartz and David McCarran, who was in Popeye. Um and uh gary was zoopley zoo or something i don't know yeah, yeah. uh so and then uh, casey campbell i'm not sure what i know casey's been in stuff and then mariano mariano is just an absolutely brilliant improviser and we've been working together for 20 years yeah well i'd love to come to your improv group honestly it would be such an honor you know just like just to I want to see what it's could, like. You could make us do things, which would really be fun. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'm thinking. I'm thinking already. I'm, I'm really thinking already. Oh my gosh. Um. So that's yeah, fun. that's that's really good. Yeah, I need to reach out to John again. He said he wouldn't be available to the um end of August because I think he he just had surgery. I think mouth surgery. Mouth surgery. Yeah, that's what he said to me over mm -hmm. messenger. So he wouldn't be available to the end of August. So I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. I'll, I'll, well, I'll tell him that I just worked with you and it was great. So oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I'll, give, tell, them all, I'll give them all a little plug for you. So. Tell John, tell John, I'll, um, I'll, 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 I'll uh, you'll he'll hear from me in August. I'll like see you in August. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't really like, you know, oh, yeah, I'll see you in August. Right. But, well, well, you're messaging me. So it's like, You'll hear, you'll hear from me in August. I don't know how to say it. It's like, mm, it's a weird term. But, I, you yeah. know, just, just connect. I'm connecting with you. I mean, that's yeah, really yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Cause when I get out from Madrid, I'm getting straight on uh, writing down the stuff I want to do on the America trip. And that's another thing when I, oh my gosh. Okay. I'm literally going to have to run out and tell my parents. I'm like, I'm so bossy for this. This has literally just been one of my greatest goals since like the pandemic always wanted to visit america and it's always been put off due to costs or to me studying at college and stuff like that so right, because i'm leaving right. completely i now have the free time and also the cost to actually go next spring so just yeah. save up and 
do it. You know, you're young and you can do it now. You should do it while you're young. And I spoke, I spoke to someone and they said, all they said was do it. We'll be waiting for you. Yeah. And exactly. they said, will like, it's like every, every single person I know. And it's like, I've got to get out of this country. I've got to get And out I'll also country. mention you to Jeff Bennett too, because I'm going to be <gasps> yes. talking to him soon. So I'll. Really? I'll oh, bless him. your heart. Thank yeah. you. Oh, Pat, you've been so sweet. I'm hey, going to. Do... This has been great fun. I, I, we got off topic a bunch, but I had a really good time. Look, so on this show, literally, I go off topic all the time. It's like okay, basically good. my show. It's not like all the podcasts where it's like question after question after question. If we yeah. go off topic, that's fine. Okay, I could point out, but at least different conversations and different subjects start to come up. And exactly. It just, it's just the stuff. I like to bring up the mo- most obscure stuff in people's careers. Uh, which is really wonderful. And, I, and it makes us a lot more relaxed and comfortable in talking to you. So there you go. Pat, thank you yeah. so much. We've had Pat. We've had a beautiful chat together and honestly it's probably been one of my most fun interviews well should i say Aww. episodes that's really nice of you to say next time we'll do it in our pajamas with a cuppa okay and... oh yeah or better yet in person in person even better i really want to do an in-person interview with someone from my show like we just do it like a reunion i really want to do it with someone who's going to i wanted to do it with sue uh, when we meet in Birmingham, but they organized and said there wouldn't be time. But I'm like, okay, well, we tried. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. um, but seriously though, thank you so much. It's been such an honor. I know it was short notice that we kind of arranged this, but honestly, thank you for being so accommodating. You know, and- uh, the the reason I just went for it was that I had a day. I knew I only had one thing today, and it was at noon. And since you said one thirty, I went perfect. Let's do that. So thank you so much for having me i i loved every minute of it you're great and you really know your stuff and that's really impressive so thank you and keep going and congrats on your own stuff that's fantastic <laughs> thank you, Pat. i really hope to keep in touch with you definitely please please let me know absolutely here, and i'll let you know when i'm over there all right kiddo take care thank you you're welcome um just one more thing um, yeah. before i properly say goodbye and like you know say like thank you for watching and stuff like that um where can we find you on social media? Um, I'm just, I'm on Instagram, but uh, I don't really do much on it. <laughs> My friend had me get on it and I'm, I don't really do much on it, but I'm on, um, I'm on Twitter uh, under music talks. So guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of In Conversation with ATF with the lovely Pat Music. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did filming it and talking to Pat as well. Um, I hope you have a good day. Stay safe, stay happy, be kind to others and yourself and just do what you love and love what you do. As Judy from Animal Crossing from uh, said, and I was like, at first I was like, I'm not taking advice from a cartoon back up, but then like, it's going to be my motto everywhere I go now. So you I know, think you should. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you around. Bye and cut.